your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Discover why Kettering University is the number one choice for many first students and schedule your tour at Kettering.edu. And by Stryker Careers. Help create the next medical breakthrough in a fantastic internship or career when you visit careers.stryker.com. Our next guest for week one is going to be Yeti Robotics 3506. Yeti Robotics, very excited to speak with you. Why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll hop into what your team's been working on. Hi, uh, I'm Lance. Oh, geez, hold on. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Lance um, on, on team Yeti at 3506. Uh, if I happen to stutter a little, just I have a little problem there, so just you're great. bear with me. No, it's but, great. Um, you're, you do great. We've been having a really productive uh four build days now well three for us but it's been four days since since kickoff which we're here thrilled to thrilled to to have everyone on um so uh our first day was spent just really brainstorming after we read the rules very extensively we actually have our team read the rule read the rule manual twice uh, just to really lock everything in um uh yeah so in our in our screen share here, um, you you can see some of our sketches, um, our sketches that we did. Uh, so everyone thought of their idea, and then they presented it to the to the whole group, um, and explained it. And so uh, initially, uh, a lot of our ideas were about the climb because this year we're we're guessing or predicting that the climb is going to be a huge huge and fun aspect of of this game. Um, so what we did, or what we thought was, or notice, I should say, um, is that you're allowed, or you're physically able to reach up and grab the, the mid bar, but you can't, but you have to, uh, traverse to the traverse bar or the high bar in order to get it. So you cannot reach those two bars from the ground. So what we initially thought of was that we would just completely skip the high bar into, um, in general, um, we'd have one climber that would, that would that here in this first one. We would have uh, one climber that, that would pull us up, and another that would just be permanently angled towards the the traverse bar, mm -hmm. um, and then that, that would extend and and um, and the bar and the climber that was latched on to the mid bar would just let go, and we'd swing forward, leaving us on the traverse bar. Well, the math did work out, but we quickly realized that this wouldn't be entirely viable considering that we'd have to have a climber that would literally pull us up, pull, have our bumpers meet that mid bar. And due to size, <laughs> size and, uh, and size constraints, we just realized that wouldn't be really possible. So we um, quickly repurposed this idea um, to, to just hang on to the, Instead of going, instead of skipping, skipping the high bar, um, and to go to the traverse bar, we would strictly go um, to the high bar, and we would reset on the high bar, and then go to the traverse bar. So instead of skipping it, we would just use it as like a, a resting point. Um, okay. So we're Greg, still Greg little... what do you make of that strategy, by the way? Um, well, yeah, I mean, no, it's okay. I was going to ask you some questions, if that's all right. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so that's, I mean, I think uh, it's a really, I, I've seen that math on the, the long reach and that's a pretty tough reach, especially with the uh, 16 inch um, extension limit. Um, yeah. what, what are your thoughts on how you're going to power that lift? Are you going to do pneumatics? Are you going to use motors? Or what are you thinking in terms of like how you're going to power that? So in, I mean, yeah, it's terrible echo. So I just get distracted. Um, but we last year, or I shouldn't say last year, but uh, in the off season of 20, 2021, uh, we developed a new climber that was um, powered by two Falcons and chain driven. Uh, it was it was a single stage, so it was fairly fairly simple. But we experienced great success and reliability from it. So that's how we would power that. Okay. So a few a few motors uh, and, and some chain so that you can power it out and back um, and then cycle through it. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's, I think that that sequential hang where you hang on one, reach out to the other one, pull over, reset and hang. I think the, that's going to be a, uh, something we're going to see different implementations of, but that same concept with a lot of teams this season. So I think that's really great thinking on your team's part. Thank you. Um, and we've actually had, had, um, so our shooter, our shooter, this was another idea that we had, um, ideas for. Um, so we initially had ideas for just having a, like, almost like a cannon that was just pointing straight upwards. Um, if any of you are familiar with Boston Wheels 4290s shooter, um, from last year, it was a double flywheel and it had immense velocity. It was incredibly powerful. Um, we were going to, or, or this design in particular, we had in mind, would shoot um, the, the cargo directly up and we'd have a tiny arc piece that would just simply bump uh, the cargo into uh, a nice trajectory of getting to the high goal. Mm -hmm. um, but upon you know further strategy, uh, we've kind of redirected our focus to the low goal because we noted that it's not about, so getting uh, ranking points isn't really about how many points you score, it's more of how many units you score. So we noticed that without doing, um, I forget what it's called, but it's like when you score five balls in auto, it's like the quintet, quintet. or something like quintet, that. Yep. Quintet, yeah, quintet. But um, without doing that, you have to score 20 balls um, total uh, to get a ranking point. So we just thought if we are a fast robot, that dumps into the low goal, we can get a lot of cycles in, um, um, like, a, and a, therefore we have a ranking point or uh, get a ranking point because we were able to get um, immense amounts of cargo in the low goal. Greg, I don't know about you, but I remember seeing a uh, Chief Delphi thread very recently uh, about advocating for why you should strongly consider uh, the logo. Um, so I, I love the strategy of, of logo this year. I think it's very balanced. Uh, Greg, how do you feel about 3506's uh, strategy towards that? Yeah, I think I think that's a great strategy. I mean, I think that, you know, with the ranking points being so important, um, strategizing to say, how are we going to get these ranking points so we can be high in the ranks so we can kind of control our own destiny? I think it's huge. Um, one of the other things I, I, I like about the logo is I I don't think anybody has really any great data on where the balls are going to go when they get spit out of the low or the high, but the low goal is obviously not going to have like seconds of bouncing all over the field. And so you might be able to cycle those balls and recollect them faster. Um, have, have you guys thought about um, any, what sort of intake you're going to have? Are you going to rely on trying to pick up off the floor? Or are you going to try to rely back on the human player to load your robot? So in here, I'll pull, play a video. Excuse the low quality. No, we can see it just fine. But so that so so that um, uh, ground intake that you guys just saw was actually um, our twenty twenty infinite recharge uh, ground intake. So. We initially, so our very first day, one of our um, biggest concerns was if the robot would be able to easily run over balls or cargo. Um, so we put, put the two cargo pieces that we had on the field and we drove around the robot trying desperately to get on top of that game piece. And we found that it is physically important. I say that now, but it's going to happen. It's <laughs> highly unlikely for this to happen. Um, so we were initially going to just push a bunch of game pieces to the human player, but we also ha had to keep in mind that we wanted high cycle times. So in, in and pushing isn't really the fastest way to do that. So we are um, developing a, a ground intake similar to um, in, in later in the chief po thread, here we are. Um, I actually mentioned that we took heavy inspiration um, so we also redesigned that, that intake that you, just, that you guys just saw to, um, we redesigned it in our 2021 season to take every inspiration off of 254, 118, and 148. Um, uh, Those are good yeah, so it's a more compact folding <laughs> design. Yeah. 
those are those saying those are great teams to take inspiration on when you're designing an intake. Yeah, also very daunting teams to do that, uh, considering their pedigree. But uh, we've experienced great success with that intake, so we're we're gonna try to see how we can um, make that a, a possibility this year. I do want to grab a couple of questions uh, from live chat uh, coming in uh, about your robot. We uh, we saw a couple of pictures uh, go by uh, that one of them had a dry base uh, on it, um, and somebody asked in regards to uh, the wheels yeah. on your on your robot. So, what are you looking at doing for uh, uh, wheels anywhere in your robot, really? Okay, so this year um, I love drivetrains. Here, I can actually pull up JVN uh, for this. So this year we're having an incredibly fast um, a drivetrain. So we're doing six wheel drive, no drop center, uh, two traction wheels in the back with, um, yeah. So, so if you're looking, it's a side view, you've your three wheels, two traction wheels in the back, one on me in the front, uh, for maneuverability. We did this last year and we had a very easy to maneuver robot. We are very happy with, so we're going to try that again. Um, our gearbox will be um, it's going to be a West Coast Drive flipped sim, uh, or flipped gearbox with two Falcons, um, and it'll be positioned in the middle. Um, here we are. And our, yeah, here we are. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're, is we're going for a pretty fast robot. <laughs> yeah, so the, the real life speed being 19 feet per second, um, that's in high gear. And low gear, we, we found a really torquey, um, torquey. Uh, wow, gear ratio. <laughs> That's a that is a very very aggressive gearing set. Yeah, um, um, so, I was really happy when I came up with this, this um, but this is what we're going with, and we're really happy with what we, with what we came up with. Yeah, I just uh, my 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 word of warning is um, to so one of the other one of the other calculators that's out there that you could do is there's the iLight um, drive simulation spreadsheet. iLight drive simulation. Yeah, um, I, I don't know that they've released a 2022 update yet, but they've released one um, for 2020. Um, and what that'll do is it'll actually give you some information about acceleration uh, okay. as, well, oh, yeah, as, well, as, as well as top speed. Because one of the, one of the things that's always a trade-off with uh, really fast robots is not just the top speed, but just also how quickly it takes to get to that top speed. And so if it takes you 10 or 12 feet to accelerate, like how many times are you ever actually going to reach that top speed? Right. Um, generally, my rule of thumb is like a robot that's geared for like 16 and a half, 17 feet per second is on like the, the high end of what you can actually get to in a normal year, in a normal like sprint situation. But with it being such a big flat field, I guess it depends on where you're going. Right. And something that we actually came up with, um, well, not that we came up with, but we have something really similar. Um, we call it the sprint distance calculator, just an Excel. Um, and what we came up and our ideal sprint distance this year was 27 feet, so half the field. Um, and we found that from a dead stop, this robot will be able to get, get uh, will be able to travel those 27 feet in 1.88 seconds. Um, I'll post that in in chief like some other time. It's it's I don't have Excel on my computers and it need to Excel to work. So no worries. We'll take a look at that soon. I do want to grab one more question before we wrap up here uh, from in chat from uh, Bob Joe Stein thirty seven asking uh, talking about your shooter. Uh, they said they mentioned that they saw you look like you're shooting low. Uh, can you talk a little about maybe some of the strategy uh, or any uh, uh, way of getting around potentially block shots or anything like that? Okay. Yeah. Definitely. So um, our strategy with that is really to, so um, I'm going to assume that you're all familiar with last year's game, Infinity Charge, mm -hmm. um, and how we were able to bump fire um, or fire within the triangle at the, at the bottom of, of the tower. Um, we're going to try a similar uh, strategy with that, how we get really close to the low goal and then just like spit them out um, just right there. So our, our shooter is going to be, positioned so it's like um so it is shooting like just above the lip so it's gonna have a pretty low rpm so it's just gonna drop them all in so so you're going so you're going for like the fender shot like your your bumper is gonna be right up against the fender and you're gonna try to do these little kind of just drop in shots so we or sorry yeah right right up against over the top so there's really no chance of missing yeah exactly 
Perfect. Yeah. I mean, that that's, I mean, especially with a low goal strategy, I think the biggest thing is if you're going to take the lower points, you've got to make sure that you're like a hundred percent accuracy, right? Exactly. With, with the high goal, you can be, you know, obviously anything greater than 50% accuracy, you're still at a benefit if we're going to high, but with the low, you've got to get to that hundred percent accuracy. So yeah, right. like being cycle times matter with that too, though, too. Yeah. The cycle times matter, but, but, but with the low goal, you really want to make sure that you are at like crazy high accuracy shots. Yeah. Well, it's also a really big target. So yeah, yeah, it definitely is. So, uh, well, Yeti robotics, uh, we got to wrap up here. We really appreciate you coming on once again, we're going to have you on in a, in a few weeks, uh, to check in with your team once again. So excited to see what your progress will be, but of course, make sure if you want to learn more about 3506, you check out their, uh, bill blocks, both on cheap Delphi and in the orange Alliance not Orange Alliance, wrong program. Wow. Uh, the open line, I hear TOA and that thing's just in my head. Greg, we had this conversation yeah. before, but I'm, pro, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> check in on the Open Alliance uh, Discord once again. So thanks a lot for coming on. Can't wait to check in your team in just a few I can't weeks. wait to see you guys again. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one-third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades 8 through 12 and located in the continental U.S. scan the QR code and complete the form by January 31st, 2022 and receive more information about Kettering. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.